Hey guys, just wanted to put a quick video out. Uh, this is old boxing versus new boxing. And I saw Don Turner was just interviewed. This guy's been in boxing over 50 years. Old school as they can get. It's worked with everybody. Uh, you name off an old champion in your head. That was after 1960, and he he's probably worked with them or knows of them. Uh, when when you go through life and you know and you're convinced of what you're doing and the message that you're spreading, uh, it's always good to hear others that have your philosophy in mind and that they believe it 100% as well. Uh, and the only way to know about your said philosophy is, does it work? Would, would it work yesterday? Will it work today? And will it continue to work tomorrow? And what we do up in here meets all three of those criteria. But it was nice to hear somebody that knows as much about boxing in their little finger as I do in my whole body reiterating the same the same message verbatim word for word and that is you young kids you most of the you young trainers need are just in a defensive philosophy this overtook boxing. Uh, it's a philosophy that's kind to promoters. Promoters love it. We'll see a good kid, a, a hell of a slugger, just a hell of a damn machine of destruction come along. And a promoter will send the kid over to... Uh, a or trainer A or B or C that they all do the same damn thing so it could be from A to Z uh, and they soften these kids up instead of hardening these kids up you start hearing the dumb the dumb mess like uh, slip three inches slip six inches no slip if you, uh, move move and punch. Uh, I just use that as an example. It's, the philosophy today is if you slip a punch and you maybe move further than the width of the glove, you're not conserving energy. And there's a reason for that because these dumbass boy trainers, even the ones that's got gray, are not working their boxers hard enough. There's the calisthenics suck. They get into this cross-training bullshit, uh, tire-flipping nonsense, uh, which is good and it's beneficial, but, you know, they'll do a few rounds of that and call it a day. You, you get a ring and sweat, and, yeah, it's time to hit showers and go home. And that ain't the way this damn sport used to work. And it's not the way we're working things. So we can move a little bit further than you can, Mr. Trainer. Uh, we can, uh, we're not even training for three rounds at 14 years old. We're training for 15 rounds at 14 years old. You're teaching a guy hit and, and move. We're, te we're teaching a guy knock his ass out and then move. Every punch we throw is with grand authority. Don't don't throw to a punch you're not willing to commit to. And that's how we do things. That's how Don Turner did things. That's how everybody did things. And we got a new generation of fighters coming up that are very good. I'm going to mention Zeke Castro because even at 125 pounds, for his weight class, he is the, by far the hardest puncher in this class coming up. He's a hard hitter. Uh, this, this kid can hit. Uh, he's, he's got a combination of the speed and power together. Joe's got a heavy punch. Of course, Joe weighs a lot more and Joe hits a lot harder. 
But I want to talk about this kid. I hope and pray. And I hope his dad sees this video. Uh, Zeke Sr., I hope you don't send him over here to Golden Boy or Mayweather that it, that it is not fixed that you, your kid needs to take his trainers with him. There is nobody more qualified to train your kid hanging up in these jackass places. There ain't nobody more qualified. All they'll do is soften your kid up, get your kid to not commit to his punches like he does today. And, uh, yeah, if you want to, you know, maybe they can engineer through corruption and the bullshit process, uh, get a big name and make, make you guys a little bit of money. Uh, but I hope that you, you stick with what you got. It's proven. What you've got is proven to... To, and, and is producing a monster of a man, a good man, a good boxer. What they've gotten is proven to, uh, uh, is proven to make losers, make quitters. So I hope that you decide honor in this sport over the money, because I promise you, if, if you do in teams, young teams like you, Put the honor of your young boxer or boxers over the quick money. The quick money. You'll make more money. Your name will be more well known through this world. Your legacy will be set. Because it's all that's required today is a tough guy. Uh, Don goes on to talk about how Rocky Marciana and several other Boxers are downplayed, and he goes on to tell a fundamental proof, uh, uh, a truth. And Rocky Marciano, at the the uh, with with what he had stacked against him, starting boxing at 25 years old, having a very short arm reach, being short, he'd, he'd still annihilate any heavyweight champion today. Kids looking at him and saying, oh, there's no way because of size that fucking kid doesn't understand boxing. It's as simple as that. We got a lot of so-called experts around here that don't understand the sport and the art of boxing. They don't get it. They don't understand it. And they're the ones that everybody in, in this generation and uh, the generation shortly after and shortly before has, has been listening to. And it's a bunch of bullshit is what it is. It's no good. That's what it is. Uh, all this 3D chess bullshit? No. Yeah, uh, all this 99% on the technique and 1% on the physical work to make your body outlast? No, that's not the way to go. That's not the way to go at all. It needs to be... 80% work of your time working on your body, building your body up, building your strength up, building your endurance up. And 20% in the technique. And you'll be able to perform. The you won't need 80% of the technique in it because your body will be so in tune and so strong, it won't take you 20% of the time to perform the techniques better. And that's what I'm saying. And that's what, I, that's what I'm saying to everybody. And you can believe me or, or not believe me, but I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, a young crop, a boxer, is coming up right now. And all of you best be thinking about getting out of the sport and going on to doing something else. Go, along, go on to doing somebody else out of something. Go on to parasitically leeching on to other boxers. Because your days are going to become numbered. These guys coming up today are listening to old men, old men, and they're telling them, you, you, you need to train for 15 rounds. The expectation is 90 seconds is all the time you got to finish your job. Train for 15 rounds, but you got 90 seconds to do it. Now let that sink in because that's what a lot of us are doing. A lot of old guys have come out 
a lot of old guys were working other jobs and now they're getting retired and they're like, I don't like the way the sport's going and they're helping these young kids like all of you should be doing. And, and a news flash to everybody, no offense to bald-headed white men, no offense, but I'm finding a whole lot of bald-headed white men seem to know everything about the, the sport, yet they really don't know nothing about it. Uh, they see it online. They look like a tough guy, but they're really not. And uh, they don't know much about the sport at all. They, they look tough and they sound tough when they're in their gyms that they own. But their gyms really are not where you should send your kid because they don't know nothing. They're put-ons, they're fakes, they're phonies. Wanting to sit and nitpick this little technique here, this little technique here. While the rest of us that they're criticizing, our plans is we're nitpicking uh, to make sure that our young guys bash your guy's face in in 90 seconds and have him immobilized on the canvas. So that's the difference there. And if you're a young kid, and you go out, I know it's limited because there ain't a lot of boxing gyms. There are more MMA gyms. Go in there to learn how to box. But stay out of these gyms that are candy assing around with people. If you're in a gym that is just solely surviving off your membership, and that's more important to a trainer in there, you don't need to be there. Or maybe you need to be there, but that ain't the guy that needs to be training you. The guy that needs to be training you is the guy that cares about you, loves you, and if he's looking for anything, it would be a healthy Christmas and birthday present the year that you win uh, the big money prize fight. That's what you should be looking for. Somebody that's willing to invest the time in you, see? Somebody that's willing to help you when you can't buy lunch. The hell are you going to be buying another man lunch and him have 80 other people buying him lunch, and you think this guy's going to steer you into a world championship, you might want to think again. You might want to think again. So, there aren't no Ace Millers no more that just open the door and let you in in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, and train you for nothing, and just devote all his time to you, and love you, and try to be fatherly to you and teach you how to be a man and teach you how to be a head cracker. He's dead. He's long gone. But there's a few of us still out here and we love you and we care about you young kids. And just kids today, no, just as much as you're being polluted by political hacks telling you things that are crazy, just insane, uh, there's boxing trainers, boxing channels, boxing news people, uh, promoters, uh, advertisers, all sorts of people that are in a conglomerated pile of feces that are handing you the same mess that you're getting on, lies that you're getting from these politicians. You need to get to a trainer that's going to teach you how to beat the hell out of somebody. This is about as simple as that. You want to simplistically get down to it. Uh, the, the art of it is to beat the hell out of the other guy first. The secondary art of it is to hit the other guy and not get hit yourself. If you've got a strength and uh, movement in your, your shoulders where you can pivot your shoulders quickly, you need to be putting that into your punches irrespective of what a damn trainer's telling you. You need to do what works for you. And there are no trainers no more. There's a lot of coaches running around. Hey, yay, 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 you can do this. Motivate you. Keep going, keep going, keep going. But there ain't a lot of trainers out there no more. The man that's going to size you up, the man that's going to look at you and realize Hey, this guy's moving his legs like Ali. He needs to be moving around that ring. They, they're not capable of doing that up here, you see. They can't look at another man and 
build on his uh, strengths and minimize uh, the the weaknesses that he has, that these strengths overcome those weaknesses. Now, ain't nobody doing that today. It's one size fits all. And it ain't no good for you young guys. It's not no good. It's just not. I'm telling you one day you're going to be hearing uh, two or three different methods of boxing and uh, you'll be talking about people like Castro over there out west, midwest it's west to me you're going to be talking about Joe Allen, that boy, that American that was living down there in Latin America knocking the fuck up out of every Latino he could get his hands on you're going to be hearing about a lot of people. Just give it some time. There's a boy up there fighting in California. He's a, uh, a Mexican-American heavyweight. I forget the guy's name, and I apologize for that. Joe likes this guy a lot. He, he's a southpaw, and this boy can hit. Still got a lot of learning to do. But he ain't in there fucking around and playing around. And moving one one step back to go two steps forward. Fuckers moving forward all the time, see? It's in your face. And that's what we need more of in this sport. See, you're damn straight. Rocky Marciano was the greatest fighter ever in the world compared to any anybody today. Sugar Ray Robinson would mow through from light heavyweight on down. Anybody. Any of them. Marvin Hagler or Thomas Hearns would pulverize anybody. Roberto Duran would be found guilty of murder in the ring today. Sugar Ray Leonard would dance around slapping the shit out of anybody today. And never get hit. Never get hit. In a, in a 15 round match. Yeah, I said 15 rounds. Go look it up. It used to be 15 rounds. It was 15 rounds forever and a day up till 1988 when the last organization abandoned it. And that's another corrupt WBC shitty thing that was done. Because uh, the damn guy was friends with Howard Cosell, a fucking boxing announcer. That's why all that happened, going down to 12 rounds, because of a fucking TV announcer. Go do your research. I lived it, see. I, I was aware of it when it happened. I heard the TV's announcer mouth running. Now you got a guy with a slim suit on, 10-foot-tall turban corn rolls going up in the damn bag. Just get on, get on, get on, get on. This sport is getting to an area, and I'll tell the truth about it, it sucks. That's why we don't half-ass even watch it no more. Don't need to. Ain't necessary to watch no damn film on nobody else. You just get in there and let the damn fist fly and beat the fuck out of, up out of everybody. It's no need to watch anybody. It's not a complicated process today. What we watch, we, we, we say it. And, and we watch bare knuckle fighting. Well, why would you do that? Because they hit. They're men. They're not candies running around here with pocketbooks and stylish female uh, sunglasses on. That's why. You go back and you look at people they give no respect to, like Sonny Liston. That they called him an animal. Let me tell you something. He knew how to put a suit on. This wilder guy knows how to put a fucking dress on. Any questions? Any questions? Boys, find you a trainer that will show you how to hit and knock the hell out of somebody. And the, the, the trainer that's hardest on you and pushes you the most, that's where you need to be. You don't need to be sitting with a guy that's blowing smoke up your ass telling you how great you are that don't work you as hard as he should. Now be sure of it. and Do what the hell I'm telling you and you'll be the better for it. I'm not getting on here mad uh, 
I'm trying to see my reflection in a mirror. I'm getting on here trying to help this sport and help you young guys out. I couldn't. You know, we, the problem we have, we can't find a gym to go in to have anybody to handle this 14-year-old boy up in here. See, that's the major problem we have. Trainers don't want him up in there because he makes them look like damn fools. Because they are fools. Nobody even wants to come forward because they know they can't do what old school's done for him. Can't find sparring partners because nobody can take a damn punch no more. See? But up in your gym with your guy sitting there teaching you the greatest, greatest of techniques and pure science with e all with equations up on a chalkboard is so evolved. Uh, Joe would bust up in your gym and fuck all you up in an afternoon. Well, it, it wouldn't be fucking all of you up because after two or three of the best of you'd get in there with him and take a round with him, you, the rest of you'd run. Gym owner would come and say, well, this is too rough for us. Uh, how do I know? Because we've been all over Latin America and that's what the fuck's been going on, see? And don't go to thinking that your balls are so big because you live a couple of thousand miles up north. The Mexicans are the same damn way. Yeah, them tough guys. They clear on out to fucking back too. And I want you to be like that. I want to see 500 Joe Allens. I, I want to see uh, 10,000 Danny Christie's out here from Bare Knuckle Fight. And that's what everybody else wants to see too. They watch boxing because they want to see boxing. So let them damn hands go, kids. Don't you ever, don't you ever throw a punch unless you're committing to that punch. Even if it's a damn jab. Every damn punch that, that you sling out there, you're leaving yourself open. And throwing the damn punch hard is half your defense right there. You hit a guy four or five damn times like you mean it right off the bat. He'll think a lot harder about hitting you back. That's how the shit works. That's all been lost. All the truth in the sport's been lost. So, I know I did a rant today. I'm so damn upset about what I'm seeing and these bullshit mid-30s, uh, typically bald-headed white trainers that think they know it all and don't know a damn thing. Don't know a damn thing. Uh, just as bad as the Kmart karate bullshit artist that uh, get your children up in there and your children go to school and get beat up thinking they can practice Kmart karate, which ain't worth the fuck. See? And nobody's telling the truth about it, but I will. I'll tell the truth about it. And I'm am I trying to offend you young guys? You know better than that. You all know me better than that. If you sit and listen to me, you know I'm trying to light the fire up underneath your ass to get you motivated to do your damn what you want to do, which is box. That's why you watch this channel. And that's what we do. I want everybody should be hitting like Joe. Everybody. Well, he was born with natural. Yeah, of course he was. Yes, he was. But build on what you got. Don't let a... a idiot uh, sit there and tell you you weren't born with it so you can't do nothing about it. Of course you can. Work on it. Work on it. If your ass can't get down and do 20 push-ups in three weeks I'm going to be doing 50 and ain't nothing getting in my damn way. In two months I'm going to be doing 100 a pop. And then we'll see how hard your ass can punch then. You'll be punching a lot harder. Work on these shoulders. Get some strength in these shoulders. Get some strength in the reaction. Everybody thinks today, well, uh, Garcia, uh, and, and he can't hit worth shit. That boy ain't a hitter. I don't know who fooled and told all you that. That's a lie. It's not true. And I like a boy. 
The boy's probably going to win a championship or two if he gets settled down somewhere and does what the hell he's told to do. If he don't, he won't. It's a simple process there. No more going to old men that are sellouts that could have trained him. Old men that would just take your money and love being in front of a fucking camera. Has-beens. He keeps doing that, he won't. But that boy can't hit. Don't hand me that. That boy can't hit. Uh, don't want to hear it. The power in his punches is the speed. But as far as him being a strong hitter, no. Nah. The power in his punches is his speed. He's worked it out. So he hit. Uh, so his punches are ferocious. But he ain't no strong guy. He ain't no strong puncher. It's bullshit. Tank Davis will go to the other end of the spectrum. Number one, he's a lefty. <sighs> Used to be a day guys wouldn't fight a lefty. He's a lefty wandering around that waits five rounds to throw a fucking punch half the time. He ain't nothing. He said, oh, you got a left hand. Put him in the ring with uh, any light. You put him in the ring with Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran would knock his ass out in probably the first minute and a half, minute and three quarters, if not within one minute of the first round. It wouldn't even be a thing. Roberto Duran would just go dead on his ass because the boy can't. Hey, don't know how to cut loose. Knows how to wait and play chess because he's listening to these smart people. That shit don't work to somebody that's really massively ripping your head up. So you, you guys need to remember that. And I've rambled on along, uh, way too long here. They're just rambling. But you damn kids need to go learn how to hit. And I think what I need to do is write a fucking book or put some kind of documentary. If I wanted to make a lot of money, I put a documentary up. How, how, you, how you can really punch harder. Because it's not rocket science. You just got to work harder at it. And nobody's willing to work harder at it. Trainers aren't willing to push nobody. You know, we got a lot of coaches. We got a lot of coaches. And they're nothing but glorified fucking cheerleaders. To be honest with you. There's some good people out there. I do. Of course, you, you all know who I like and who I love and you know I'm not talking about you. So don't even go there with me. You know who I respect and you know who you are. But we got a lot of glorified cheerleaders out there that are kissing the ass of kids. I'd rather run everybody off and have one good kid to take up and win the Golden Gloves. One good kid to win a championship. One good kid to win an Olympic medal. Before I'd sit around and kiss everybody's ass. To have 50 kids paying me money. It's not what I do. Right? So, I needed to spit that out again. I needed to rant. Uh, it's been calm around here. Love where I'm living. Everything's beautiful. Everything's great. Everything's grandiose. Uh, but that gives me time to sit here and think about what ain't and what's going on with some of you kids. And it just sickens me. And it sickens me when somebody, back when I was a kid and they said, old school, you sat down and then look how my ears stick out. You want to know why my ears stick out like this? Because when I was young, my dad would tell me, and my dad would mop the floor up with you punks. And we'd sit and be all ears. See, I was a little kid, uh, Johnny Unitas, probably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, played 10 games, eight games a year, 10 games a year, put up stats that these guys couldn't, couldn't even possibly uh, catch in those amount of games. But you kids think these guys are the greatest. And you don't even allow the quarterback to be hit. See, Kids, you've got to open up your perspective and see what the fuck's going on around you and see where your people came from. And, and your people would be fellow boxers. And see where these guys come from, what they went through. 
to see a damn kid running down the streets, got long pants on and a fucking designer shirt on. This is my ninth mile not breaking a sweat and got a cell phone in his hand. Don't hand it to me. See, I see past all that. That just fools you guys. It doesn't fool me. I know what the fuck's going on. I know how to cheat because I did it 50 fucking years ago. See? The only difference then, we got caught because people were smarter. Here, you can go put it on... Put it in a fucking movie. And nobody's going to catch anybody. So, that's my rant for today. You young kids, step it the hell up. Step it up. I'm not giving you candy out here. I am promising you this, though. If you try and you give 100% of what you got, and then on top of that, give a little bit more, sit down, realize your strengths and your weaknesses, and work on your strengths to overcome the weaknesses that you have and use the strengths that you have and you are going to succeed in this sport. You are going you uh, you may not not everybody's going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. If they were it wouldn't wouldn't be worth nothing. Kind of like it is today cuz you got 10 different champions at one time. But maybe you don't get there but maybe maybe you win a hundred amateur matches. Maybe you got so much shit to hang up on the wall behind you that they let you in that university you wanted to go to. Maybe you got so much shit but behind you in that wall. Uh, you go down and you're applying for a good job with the city or the county or the state. Or I'm just using examples. And that guy know what you got back there on that wall and they give you that good job. Always there's a win to take out of it. Always you will win. But you just got to dig deeper than your generation's digging. And that's not hard to do for you young guys today. Because everybody thinks they know everything and nobody's really doing a lot. Isn't that amazing? For all they know, nobody's doing nothing. Get in, watch a 12-round fight. Two guys run, hugging and then running from each other. Come on. Don't tell me you can't be 10 times better in this sport than you are today. Don't tell me that because you would be lying to me and that's offensive. But I am going to tell you the truth. And sometimes the truth offends you. And that is you can be 10 times better than you are today. Dig deeper. Work harder than that next guy. The spoils in, in, in this sport go to the hardest worker. They always have and they always will. The sport was in decline, not because we had a bad heavyweight champion. We had a heavyweight champion getting older. It was Larry Holmes. The hardest working guy come up through there. Nothing special about Mike Tyson. He just worked harder. And was told from day one, be aggressive. Everything with bad, bad intentions upon it. Don't ever throw a punch unless you're committing it. Committing it. So, hope any of, I hope this helps somebody out. Because it sure helped me release the frustration I have watching this screwed up sport today. And watching all this hell and then having to sit around and hear you kids talk about how, you know, anybody under 30 talking about how great everything is, how wonderful it is. So helps me to unload. And when I unload, I hope it helps you out. Dig deep, kids. God will bless. God loves strong, hard workers. And he'll bless you. You believe on him, you start be believe on him, don't believe in yourself. He'll let you know to believe in yourself when you need to and when you don't. Because you'll know what's coming your way before it comes. It's what faith is. You need to start digging deep and applying faith. And you can do anything you want. Be the next Elon Musk or Donald Trump if you choose. Uh, it's all in willing, what is a man willing to do? What 
great big portion of his life is he willing to sacrifice to be able to work hard for that thing. So don't you dare tell me you can't do something. I don't want to hear it. You need to pedal that down there at the gym you go to. But don't come pedal it to me because I know good and damn well you can dig deeper. You can fight harder and you need to let go of the punches and you need to fight, folks. It's as simple as that. Fight.